guys, so today I'm gonna be looking at a creepy story. So yeah, let's just get right into the video. I am a nurse and I currently work nights. It's a total drag, but I'm hopeful I can go today soon since some coworkers are planning retirements. Anyway, I was working one night when just after 3 a.m., my son's monitor alerted me to sound and movement. No big deal at all. He probably coughed loudly or sneezed or something. He's three now, so he generally sleeps all night. I bring it up on my phone and I see him and my wife sitting on the bed. Again, no big deal. He might have cried out or gotten scared or something. I was about to close the app when I noticed they were acting strange, almost creepy. And when I say almost creepy, I mean creepy as balls. They were sitting on the bed together, both of them just staring up at the camera with blank, emotionless stares. The night vision is black and white, so they had white, eerie looking eyes. They didn't move at all aside from their visible breathing. They just sat there staring at the camera. I close the app and give my wife a call to make sure everything is okay. I never get to call home on lunch, so in a way this is kind of a nice to get to talk to my family while at work. It rings a couple times before she answers with a very groggy hello. It was like she was dead asleep when I called and she looked wide awake when on the camera. Hey, you guys okay? Huh? Yeah, buddy. My son's nickname came in like 15 minutes ago. Seemed scared so I said he could sleep with mama. I'm confused here since I saw them in his room a minute ago. Literally 60 seconds had passed since I closed the app and made the call. Wait, so you guys are in bed? Yeah, I fell asleep right away. Everything okay? Everybody keeps waking me up. She's kind of annoyed. Hang on a sec. I put her on speaker and bring up the app, hoping I don't see it. When the app loads, I get that pang of intense nervousness in my stomach that I haven't had in a long time. Since I was in school and realized while I was eating breakfast, a paper or something was due that day and I hadn't done it. My heart leaps into my throat. My wife and son are sitting on his bed looking up at the camera. Same emotionless stares. Hello? You guys are in bed, right? Yeah, we're trying to sleep. Well, I'm looking at his camera and I see you two sitting on his bed. Huh? No, we're in our bed. I know that's what you mean, but I'm looking at his bed and you two are in the... Hang on, she says. She's quiet for a second while she brings up the camera on her phone. I hear this guttural, terrified gasp, like she had sucked all the air in our room into her lungs, filling them to the capacity. I don't hear this kind of gasp from my wife often, usually only when she's truly afraid, like during a jump scare in a movie or well, one time when we turned her back on our son for literally a second and he was down by the mailbox inches from the road. I hear rustling of sheets and the line goes dead. Of course, now I'm absolutely terrified myself, so I immediately call back. It goes to voicemail, so I call again. I call again and again with no answer. Finally, after about four minutes, she calls me. I tell you that four minutes felt like 40 years. Hey, what's happening? I ask. She's absolutely hysterical and crying. I can't understand a word she says. Stop, slow down for just a second, I say. She slows down enough to explain they are in the car and driving to her parents. She looked at the camera and when she saw what was on it, she got up and grabbed our son and rushed downstairs and out the door. Didn't even close the garage. Don't worry about it, I said. I'll drive by when I get off and close it. We live in a generally safe neighborhood, so I'm not too concerned the door is up. You would not go in there, she says. Hell no, I return. Why are we on the camera, she asked. Is it a recording? I don't know, I return. I'm gonna keep watching it and see if there's anything I can tell. She got to her parents safely and it was hard to hang up. I told her we'll figure it out in the morning, hopefully just a glitch. She said she didn't think it was a glitch. When she was running out, she had to run by our son's room and the door was open. There's a little flashing light on the back of the camera that indicates it's connected to the internet. It gives off just enough light that when she ran by, she thought she saw out of the corner of her eye a shadowy outline of what could have been an adult sitting on our son's bed. <gasps> It sends chills down my spine to think about it. Knowing they were safe and out of the house is the only thing that kept me at work that night. It was a long four hours, but I kept checking the camera every chance I got. Sure enough, they were still sitting on the bed staring up at the camera with emotionless gazes. I studied them to see if I could see any pattern from their breathing to their blinking. Their breathing was steady and looked normal. It was their blinking that would tell me if this was just some kind of bizarre time looped freak accident video or not. I intently stare at my phone and count the seconds between each blink, telling myself that if this is a loop, then their blinks should be even and occur at the same time each time. There was no pattern to their blinking. It was erratic and random. 
just as a person blinking should be. The passing hours are what finally sealed the deal that this was not a weird looped video of some kind. My son's window is visible on camera and I can see on camera that it is getting lighter outside his room. His curtains keep out just enough light to prevent the camera from exiting night vision but let's in just enough to be able to tell the sun is rising. I try to figure out what I'm going to do before I leave work. Calling the police comes to mind but I talk myself out of it. First of all, what am I supposed to say? Someone is in my house that looks like my wife but isn't? Worse yet, what if they are entities of some kind and the police do go over and kills them or something? I decide to tell my co-worker about it. He's a firm believer in the paranormal and might have a suggestion. I show him the video and tell him the story. His initial response of that's creepy as doesn't help much but he says he wants to go over and check it out. He says we both should to see if not my wife will try and act like my wife. I tell him absolutely not and he says we should at least go to the house even if we don't go in. I agree on that since I wanted to close the garage. We got to my house and walked around the perimeter first. Not sure what we wanted to accomplish by that, but it felt like something we should do. The curtains were all drawn since nobody was there to open them in the morning, so we couldn't see anything. I went to close the garage and suddenly had this overwhelming urge to go inside and investigate. It was like I just had to know what was going on, so in we went. We walked through the kitchen towards the foyer where the stairs are. It's so quiet in our house right now you could hear a feather drop. Forget the pin. We stop at the bottom of the stairs and wait a few seconds. I look at the camera again and they are still sitting there. I've never been so scared in my life. My coworker puts his foot on the first step and I suddenly say stop loudly. Forget this, we're out of here, I tell him. I start making my way back to the kitchen. We hear a loud creak in the floor from upstairs. It's my son's room. He has a very loud creaky board right in the middle of his floor that's almost impossible not to step on. My wife and I are still deciding if we ever want to fix it because it will alert us if he's ever up to no good when he gets older trying to sneak out or something. Come on, come on, come on, I yell as I motion for him to move. We're out of the house in about two seconds. Out on my street, I check my phone. Now, only not my son was sitting on the bed. Same blank stare. Not my wife was gone. <gasps> Holy, my co-worker says. That was stupid of us. Do not tell my wife we went inside. She would be so ungodly mad if she found out what we just did. I use my garage door opener in my car to close the door. Before we leave, I look at the camera again. Not my wife is back on the bed with not my son, both staring blankly up at the camera, blinking every few seconds. That was all for about four days ago now. Not my wife and not my son are still sitting on the bed staring up at the camera. They haven't moved a millimeter. We obviously haven't gone back to the house. What do we do? <gasps> That's so freaking scary! <laughs> oh my god, it's like real life a horror game, a horror movie. Nah, it feels more like a horror game, you know, because you're like constantly checking the camera. And it feels like you have to like accomplish a mission, but you just can't be loud. You know, you can't alert the ghosts or something. Yo, that's freaking creepy. The fact that they went inside and then they made a sound and then the not my wife was like, who's there? And then they got up and got out of the camera frame and then, you know, checked who was there. Oh, that's creepy. <laughs> Yo, these are some good stories, but so creepy. Oh my gosh, that creeps me out the most. Even in like horror movies, when, you know, you see a scene of, you know, a ghost or a monster or something, and then the person looks away and they look back and the, it's gone. Oh my gosh, that gives me so much anxiety. <sighs> Why in the world? Who do you think they were then? Obviously, if they have and not my wife and not my son then they obviously have them as well you know a husband version not my husband version oh my gosh where is the not my husband then if he's not in the bed with the not my son and not my wife then where is the not my husband what if he's in the car with the with 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 his real wife and real son. Oh my gosh, yo. Yo! Yeah, we shouldn't be reading these at night. Mm. <laughs> so creepy though, if you think about it, it's so freaking creepy. Oh, oh, oh. So, I've been dating my girlfriend for almost a year and last month we moved in together. Maybe that's kind of fast, I don't know. My parents sure thought it was, but honestly, everything was great in the beginning. We get along really well and we've never had more than a brief argument. But then she started whistling. 
It's so dumb, I know, but she's always whistling this weird song and it really gets on my nerves. My mom kept telling me that once you move in with someone, you discover all of the quirks they've been hiding from you. And it's not like I didn't expect that to be true. But for some reason, this is just an ongoing issue with us and I don't know what to do. At first, I would just hear her whistling it when she was showering. It was kind of cute, like her own little bathroom theme song. I didn't recognize the melody, but it was very distinct. I could mimic it from memory if I wanted to. In fact, sometimes it gets stuck in my head and it drives me a little crazy. You know the type. After a week or so, I asked her what the song was and she just laughed. I'm wondering if maybe she came up with it on her own, something that she does absently, especially once she started doing it more. Like I'd be reading a book and she'd be on the computer and she'd just start whistling and I tried to ignore it. I seriously feel like a jerk for being so grumpy about it and I know she wasn't doing it to annoy me, but she'd just go on and on and it would pull my attention away from whatever I was doing. So I finally said something a few nights ago. I was going over some legal documents for work and she just starts whistling like crazy on and on and I'm trying to block it out and it's seriously excessive like I know you guys are probably thinking that I was overreacting but it felt like she was whistling right into my ear and it just frayed my last bit of patience as calmly and nicely as I could I called out to her and asked her to quiet down she didn't reply I asked her again and she still didn't answer so I left the bedroom and found her in the living room watching a movie. She wasn't whistling anymore and for some reason that really irked me. It felt like she was messing with me. She just looked over at me like she didn't know what my deal was. I asked her if she could stop whistling so much. She told me she wasn't whistling. Now, I get that maybe she doesn't realize she's doing it, but no one whistles that much and doesn't notice. It's not really like her to mess with me like that, and I don't know what she's trying to get out of this. I thought maybe she was teasing or playing a joke, but she had to see how annoyed I was. I asked her again to just not whistle so loudly, and she didn't answer. There was tension in the room, and it felt like our first fight since moving in together. Even though she didn't whistle for the rest of the night, I couldn't focus on my work anyway because I was upset about the confrontation. Then, of course, the next night, she was whistling again. I hear her when she comes home from work and she keeps going for at least an hour. I didn't want to have another fight, so I just hung out in the bedroom and listened to her move around for a while. I felt like I was blowing things out of proportion, but honestly, how hard is it to just not whistle all the time? It was no big deal when it was now and then, but I feel like she whistles more than she even talks to me now. So I'm sitting up in the room thinking about that and that's probably why I was worked up when I finally came down. She was cooking dinner, which is sweet, but she was still whistling. So I said softly, hey honey, maybe we should put on some music instead so you don't have to feel the silence with whistling. I tried to play it off like a joke, but I knew she'd probably see through it and get annoyed again. She didn't even turn to face me, just huffed and kept cooking. After a minute, I told her I was sorry about the other night, but the whistling just sort of strikes my ear wrong, and if she could try to not whistle so much and so loudly, it would make my life a lot easier. I feel like I was being fair. I know it seems controlling and nitpicky, but it was bothering me a lot. We all have our things, you know. I try not to chew loudly at the table because it bothers her. So why can't she just stop whistling sometimes for me? But she totally freaked out. She turned around and told me she wasn't whistling and she didn't know what my problem was. At this point, I don't get why she was doing this. It obviously wasn't funny for either of us and she seemed genuinely upset. So I don't know why she kept provoking me. I asked her what her deal was, why she was so defensive about the stupid whistling and she told me to shut up. She told me she was sick of talking about it, like I was the one being unreasonable. I never get mad at her but I just snapped. I told her to stop whistling before I lost my mind. She called me crazy just because I was getting a little upset and somehow that was all I could take. I grabbed one of the cast iron pans from the stove and swung it at her head. <laughs> There was blood everywhere and her jaw might be broken. No, I think it is for sure. I couldn't believe I'd lost my temper like that and I have no idea how we can move past this. I feel so ashamed for letting things get physical regardless of how much she might have been provoking me. But here's the kicker. She's still whistling. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I asked her nicely to please stop, but now she won't even pause. For two days, she's just been lying on the kitchen floor with her eyes rolled back and her mouth hanging open, just whistling. I don't know what to do. I don't want to break up, but this is just too much. I just need her to shut up. Just shut up. Just shut up. Just shut up. Just shut up. Wow, what a freaking story. 
<laughs> Yo, I didn't expect that. I thought it was gonna be another tourist. I didn't expect him to like whack her. Wow, that was a pretty good story though. Jeez. Oh my gosh. The thing is that I was expecting her to really not be the one whistling, you know? I thought the twist was gonna be like, but I'm not whistling. And then it was gonna be like, so who's whistling? Who's in a house? Who's whistling? But she was the one who was whistling. What kind of monster is she then? Can she just whistle without moving her mouth? Like she can just whistle? She walks everywhere and she just whistles like she has speakers or something, you know? <laughs> she being dead and she's still whistling? Yo. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Okay, so this one is obviously not a real story. <laughs> oh my gosh. Honestly though, when I read some of these stories, I can't tell whether they're real or not until I get to the ending and I'm like, ah, okay, that's not real. Okay. <laughs> oh my gosh. Imagine, imagine if someone was just dead and they're still whistling that's freaking creepy well that's it for the video hope you guys enjoyed tell me in the comments down below what your thoughts are and as always thanks for watching hope you guys liked it and i'll see you guys next time bye